Greetings everyone, JC here for Interface. Today it's a tutorial video showing you how to take a dual booted machine with Windows and Linux on it, remove Linux, and go back to being just a Windows machine again. Here's the situation. If you've tried one of the distributions of Linux that allows you to set up a dual boot environment and you've decided that Linux isn't for you, you need to go back to Windows. Or maybe you just want to reclaim the hard drive space that Linux is taking up. Or maybe you're just tired of having to choose Windows at the boot up. Either way, you want to get rid of Linux and you want to go back to using Windows. So how do you do that? Do you have to reformat the machine, start all over, reinstall the operating system, all of your data, all of your applications? Nobody wants to do that. It takes three days. I'm going to show you a, a way that you can do this that takes about an hour to do, and it will restore your machine back to a full Windows-only operating system with no trace of Linux whatsoever. Now, here's what you're going to need. First of all, you will need a restore disk if you are running Windows 7. This is also called a boot disk. Go to Backup in Control Panel, and up in the corner you will see Create Restore CD. Your Windows 7 installation DVDs will work too. A lot of people don't get those these days because the operating system comes preloaded on the hard drive. If you are going to be doing this with Windows XP, you must have a Windows XP installation CD here. It does not have to be the exact CD that your Windows XP installation is installed from, but it has to be a real Windows XP installation CD. And finally, as an option, especially if you're using Windows XP, you will need a live Linux CD. It can be any distribution that includes Gparted in the live package, and that would be Ubuntu or Mint. Fedora does the same thing and many, many others, but make sure it's there. And one word of caution, before you actually start doing this, make sure that your Windows boot disk will actually boot the computer. Don't assume that it will just because it says it wrote perfectly. And finally, make sure that you do a backup before you do any of this because just like any time that you modify the master boot record or play around with partitions on the hard drive that contains your operating system, there is always the chance of data loss. So make sure that you have a full backup before you proceed. And also, if you have any data in your Linux partition you want to keep, obviously, make sure you back that up as well, because we're going to be getting rid of it, and it ain't going to be there no more. Here's the machine that we're going to be removing Linux from today, and we're booted into the Linux installation. It is Linux Mint 9. I have popped my Windows XP boot disk into the machine, and all we have to do to get to that is go ahead and restart the machine, and we're going to do that now. So go down here to quit in Linux Mint. We would like to restart, please. And then we will be able to boot into the Windows XP disk and remove Linux from the operating system. Actually, what we're going to be doing with the XP disk is not removing Linux from the operating system. Uh, we're going to be restoring the master boot record so that the uh, computer, when it boots up, only sees Windows. To actually remove the Linux partitions, we have some more work to do. Now, it takes a while for these disks to actually boot up, especially in Windows 7. If you're doing it in that operating system, the same thing goes for Vista as well. So be patient. It may seem like the thing has crashed and stopped working, but it can take a long, long time for these disks to boot up a Windows machine. So just be patient. The Windows XP installation disk has gotten itself all booted up and ready to go, and we're presented with some choices. If you were doing this in Windows 7, you would be at a graphical user environment that would be asking you uh, what you wanted to do. In this case, we want to repair our Windows installation, so we will click R on the keyboard. We won't click it. We'll just press the button, thinking in terms of mice, and here we are in the land of DOS. This takes a couple of seconds for it, get it, for it to uh, get itself together. It's going to ask us what installation of Windows we would like to fix. And in this case, there's only one, so we will choose one. It's going to ask for a password in Windows XP. If there is an administrator password set for your XP installation, you will need to provide it here. If there is no password, just hit Enter. And it puts us to a command prompt, which is at 
uh, the C prompt. So it's uh, C colon Windows or wherever your uh, operating system happens to live on your computer. Now, here we have a opportunity to do a lot of different things, but today we're going to be doing a uh, restore of the master boot record. If we were doing this in Windows 7, it would be this command. B-O-O-T-R-E-C slash fix MBR. And it won't work here in this installation because we're in Windows XP, but that's the command that you're looking for. Here, we just need to type fix MBR in Windows XP. Now, in Windows 7, before we proceed any further, when you get to your graphical environment that gives you all the choices, you're going to want to choose Command Prompt, which will bring you to a window that looks very similar to this. And the command will be boot rec space slash fix MBR. For Windows XP, it's just fix MBR. Go ahead and hit, hit Enter. And, of course, it puts up a lot of warnings and asks us if we really want to do this. Yes, we do. The master boot record has been rewritten, and that means that our Linux installation is no longer actively bootable on our system. Now, to get booted up, what we're going to do is restart the computer. So we need to exit. It would help if I type the right thing. Let's exit. <laughs> and the machine will restart. We do not want to boot from the CD, so don't hit any key. Matter of fact, we can go ahead and take it out. And as you can see, we are booting directly into Windows XP. And once Windows XP gets booted up, we're going to talk about how you can go on and remove those Linux partitions. Now that Windows XP is booted up and all settled in, we have one more thing to do. We have to go in and remove the partitions that Linux created when it installed itself so we can reclaim that hard drive space. So what we want to do is go to My Computer and we want to right click on Manage. We want to choose Disk Management from the window here and as you can see we get a uh, illustration of what was on our hard drive. Here is our Windows installation and here is our Linux installation that we need to remove. So all you have to do now is delete the logical drive. Linux usually puts two or three partitions in here. Sometimes it places it in a logical partition which means that you need to delete uh, the logical partitions. Then you can uh, delete the logical partition that it lives in and now you have all of this free space. In Windows XP you could do all kinds of interesting things here. You could, re you could create a new drive and just give it a new letter and that's one way to reclaim the space. Or you can boot your computer off of a Linux live CD and use Gparted to resize this partition and take up the entire drive. The choice is entirely up to you. Here's a quick look at how you can use Gparted to resize your Windows partitions after you have removed the Linux partitions from your hard drive. Simply boot the machine up into a Linux Live CD. In this case, it's Ubuntu 10.10, but most of them come with the Gparted utility installed. And all you have to do in this case is come to Administration and then click on Gparted Disk Editor here. And this will take a little bit to load because we are working at CD speed. And once it gets loaded up, this is pretty much what you're going to see. You'll see that here is your Windows partition and here is the space that was left over after we removed all of those Linux partitions. To fix this, all you have to do is click on that and then right click choose resize or move. In this case we do not want to move, we just want to resize. Moving a partition takes a long time and may cause it not to boot. In this case we just want to fill up all of the unallocated space with that partition and then apply that change and 
tell the utility to go ahead and apply all of the operations. It's going to warn us that uh, we may lose data if we do this, but chances are we won't. And it resizes the partition, and as you can see, now our Windows partition takes up most of the entire drive. All you have to do is restart, let Windows boot up, and now Windows has the full use of the hard disk. Now don't forget that Windows is probably going to want to run a check disk at startup. Go ahead and let it. It's just simply because you changed the partition size with a third-party editor, and it wants to check the drive out and make sure that everything's okay. Well, there you go. Now you should have a completely Linux-free Windows machine. Thanks for watching the video. And don't forget to check out live.scottydonline.com for all the details on how you can join the community we're building around Techertainment. And be sure and check out Interface Webcast live every Friday night at 7 o'clock Eastern Time U.S. That's 4 o'clock Pacific, right around 12 midnight GMT, depending on whether your country observes summertime or daylight savings time or not. Be sure and figure all that out and check it out at live.scottydonline.com. JC, waving bye-bye. Thanks for watching.